new technologies that we see emerging and that will develop, we believe, the IoT to the next level. And I will concentrate on four important technologies. One is fog and cloud computing. The other is IoT networks, blockchain, and artificial intelligence. And I will give you some information on all four. Let's start with fog and cloud computing. Last year, Bosch announced our own cloud, the Bosch IoT cloud. What is the advantage of a cloud? I would say two things mainly. First, endless computing power. So we can do very complicated computations uh, using back-end uh, computing resources. The second is elasticity. So this means if you have an IoT solution and the data traffic changes, the number of participants, for example, changes, uh, the computing power in the cloud is automatically scaled without human intervention. So these I see as the two main advantages of cloud computing. What is fog computing? Of course, if we do everything in the cloud, we need huge bandwidth. We need to transfer a huge amount of data, which doesn't make a lot of sense for all kinds of uh, data. So for example, imagine video data in a car. You cannot transfer all the video data to the back end. But that's why we need on asset, in the sensor, in the ECU, capabilities for data handling and also for computing. And that's what we call fog computing. Bosch is very active on this field, and I would, would only like to give you two examples. We bought a company called Prosist. For example, they can do things like software deployment on the asset. We call it FOTA, or firmware update over the air. And we are invested by our subsidiary Bosch Venture Capital in a company called Foghorn. And they, for example, have a technology that allows to pre-analyze data on the asset to react in almost real time. IoT networks is the second big topic. If you today look at an IoT application, very often GSM is not appropriate. Why? Because, for example, a lack of um, network coverage but also, very often, power consumption is prohibitive if you look, for example, at a small sensor. But also, latency requirements are, for many applications, not sufficient. So if you use today's GSM, very often latencies are in the seconds uh, or hundreds of milliseconds range. And with this, you cannot do many applications that are necessary, for example, in, with respect to safety-critical missions in cars. So what can we do about this? Well, first of all, if we want to reduce the cost per device, for example, we can go to low power wireless area network. In connecting our thermal technology boilers to the internet, we use a technology from Sigfox, which reduces the cost per device significantly. If we want to reduce latency times, we work on two technologies mainly, Deutsche Telekom and Nokia. It's called mobile edge computing. What are we doing there? We use the cellular structure of the LTE to make a vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. In this case, as you can easily imagine, we need, of course, very short latency times because you want to know that another car is coming before you hit it, of course. And another example is the cooperation with Vodafone and Huawei in the so-called LTE vehicle-to-X uh, technology that, for example, we use uh, also for vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle safety critical information. In both applications, we need latency times in the millisecond range. Let's look at the third technology node, which is blockchain. Blockchain is one of the buzzwords of today's world. Blockchain is a distributed database, or we call it a digital ledger in German, Grundbuch. The first application of uh, blockchain was something that had nothing to do with our IoT. It was in a currency that exists only in the, in, in the internet. You all know it. It's Bitcoin. So, of course, we are not interested in, in Bitcoins, but if you understand this technology in a little bit more detail, you easily recognize that it can be used for something completely different, which is highly relevant for our IoT strategy. Namely, we can establish smart and secure contracts between individual human beings. We can protect the identity of products, so for example, for counterfeit solutions. 
We believe blockchain is very important also to reduce the dependency uh, on platform providers. The fourth area I want to touch is artificial intelligence. We believe at Bosch that artificial intelligence will be a key know-how domain for our company in all areas of our business. Why? Well, today, many of the products within Bosch, but also, of course, uh, also the products that we do not make ourselves, are very complicated from a technical point of view. But if you look at them from a human point of view, many of the products are very stupid. Also, this car has a lot of electronics inside, but from a human point of view, it's very stupid. So what does this mean? What, what are the things we have to change to make things more intelligent? I see two areas. One is, it must have the ability to learn. Today's very complicated devices are unable to learn. So learning is the first human ability. And second is intelligent action. So that things do something intelligently uh, when they act. Last year, Google's AlphaGo for the first time was beating the best human Go player in the most complicated play that is, is known. But what I find even more interesting is that recently a deep learning algorithm was beating the best poker players in the world. The computer was able to learn how to bluff in a, in a poker game. That's how far artificial intelligence uh, is already today. Now, what can we do with artificial intelligence? We can make things more like intelligence, intelligent assistance of human beings, and that's exactly what we want to do. So to change Bosch products to intelligent assistance. This kind of artificial intelligence will be needed for autonomous driving because very naturally it will be unable for each developer, for every developer, to foresee all the, all the situations that an autonomous car will meet in real life. Bosch is heavily investing in uh, artificial intelligence. We founded a corporate-wide Bosch Center for Artificial Intelligence beginning of this, this year, and we will invest several hundred millions of euros within the next five years into this center. It's distributed over the world, so it's not, it's, uh, it's not a German institution only. And beyond our corporate uh, borders, we invest in the build-up of a so-called cyber valley in the Stuttgart-Tübingen region. I would like to announce today a very important new product where we cooperate with NVIDIA. It's an artificial intelligence car computer. It uses the latest NVIDIA chip technology, and it, it's used for autonomous driving. 